So in this video, we're finally going to put together everything we've learned so far to figure out an equation for the absorption coefficient uh, alpha of a semiconductor. So we started out by figuring out what the transition rate was uh, if I have an electron in this single energy state E1 uh, and it's we have some electromagnetic field of a certain frequency and a certain intensity. Uh, we figured out what the transition rate, uh, let's call that W, was for a given electric field and that was just given by Fermi's golden rule and we found that W was just equal to uh, what was this? Uh, Q times the electric field over 2h bar times this thing that we called the dipole matrix element, which we don't have to worry about calculating, uh, at least not yet, times this delta function, or 2 pi times this delta function, uh, which involves the energy separation or the frequency separation between these two energy levels, and the photon energy or the photon. Uh, I call that omega L in previous videos. So omega, the angular frequency of the light. And so this we can interpret as the percent of electrons, uh, the percent of electrons that transition from E1 to E2 per unit time. So now all we need to figure out is how many electrons we have in this state E1. And we said we we figured that out in the last video. This was given by our reduced density of states. And in the last video, I somewhat mistakenly said that this was a, f a function of the photon energy. Uh, really, it's a function of the energy separation between the two states. So we figured this out for our band structure, uh, for the band structure of the semiconductor that we were dealing with. Oh. Uh, let me draw that a little more symmetrically. So we've got some conduction band and some valence band. And this is the momentum axis. This is the energy axis. And we can consider states sort of one at a time. Uh, so let's call this state, uh, let's call this energy level E2 and this energy level E1. And this is delta E. Then we calculated uh, an equation for the reduced density of states. And I'm just going to re, uh, reprint that here for completeness. It was just 4 pi times 2 times the reduced mass to the 3 halves over h cubed times our energy separation delta E minus our band gap energy. And so now we know the number of electrons in every single one of these states E1. So in this state E1, in this state E1, in this state E1, all we need to do is sum over all of these states, or since they're so closely spaced together, we can just integrate over all of them. And so we're gonna to want to integrate from uh, delta E is equal to the band gap, uh, because below that there's, there's no states, uh, to some energy, let's call that infinity, some energy that's far away from the edge. Our reduced density of states as a function of the energy separation times our Fermi, uh, what we got from Fermi's gold, golden rule, our percentage transition rate uh, per unit time as a function of the energy separation integrated over the entire energy separation. But the really great thing about this is that we've got a delta function here. Right now it's a function of delta omega um, and we can change it to a function of delta E by multiplying the inside and the outside by h bar. So 2 pi h bar delta, delta E minus our photon energy or our light uh, energy. And this just used the scaling property of the delta function. So delta of ax is 1 over a times delta of x. And you can, uh, you can convince yourself that this is the case. Now I'm going to lump all this stuff into some prefactor. Let's call it B for now, just so I don't have to drag things all over the place. Um, so our transition rate as a function of the energy separation is just B times this delta function, delta E minus our photon energy or minus our light energy. And the beauty of this is when we insert this delta function into the integral, uh, we're now just integrating from eg to infinity, our reduced density of states uh, multiplied by this delta function, delta E minus our photon energy. 
And so this delta function makes it so we don't even need to evaluate this integral. This just becomes uh, our density of states at the photon energy multiplied by this prefactor b. And th this is the sifting property of the delta function. Um, if you've taken some uh, signal processing classes for before, you'll be very familiar with this, or electromagnetics, or a variety of other places where the where the delta function shows up. And so this is basically our final answer. This is the number of photons absorbed uh, per second per unit volume. This is uh, the answer that we've been looking for. This is how light interacts with matter, or at least how matter absorbs light. Um, and so this is great, but uh, we kind of don't really want to know the number of photons absorbed. Uh, we'd we'd sort of like to apply any number of photons that we like. So we'd like to apply uh, any optical intensity, for example. Um, we don't we don't want to be constrained to a specific uh, optical intensity. So we'd like to normalize this, uh, or we'd like to divide it by the number of photons. Uh, per second that are incident on the semiconductor. So this is going to be our absorption coefficient. It's, um, uh, it's a normalized quantity. But since we typically work with optical intensity rather than optical power, uh, then we're also going to normalize this uh, per area. So we, we want to divide by the intensity. And this absorption coefficient is in per unit length or typically given in per unit centimeters. And so it'll tell you if you're shining light on some surface. So if you're shining light initially on some surface, it'll tell you how that light decays, uh, how it slowly gets absorbed as it goes inside the semiconductor. Or really any material at all. Uh, and so this is the number of photons per second per area incident. So on the top we have absorbed, on the bottom we have incident. And so we know how to calculate the number of photons from the optical intensity. Uh, it's just the optical intensity divided by the photon energy. So this is the number of photons per second per area. This is our bottom, uh, what we're going to put on the bottom. And on the top, we've just got what we previously calculated. So this coefficient b uh, times our density of states as a function of the photon energy. And we divide that by i over the photon energy. But B we had in terms of our electric field, E naught. Uh, and so we'd really like our intensity in terms of the electric field. And so we can just substitute uh, I is equal to E naught squared over 2 times the wave impedance of free space, eta naught. And this eta naught has a value around 377 ohms. It's just a convenient, um, a convenient way of converting from intensity to electric field. And since this is generally in a material, we need to divide eta naught by n or multiply this whole, uh, this whole quantity by n, the refractive index. So refractive index of the material. So if you plug any th everything in, uh, and I leave that as an exercise for you, uh, you'll get that our absorption coefficient as a function of the photon energy is just the photon energy uh, times pi q squared eta naught uh, divided by the refractive index times h bar and then all multiplied by this dipole matrix element uh, magnitude squared and then this is all multiplied by the density of states uh, as a function of our photon energy and so this uh, this density of states we can calculate like we can plug in a number for the photon energy and figure out what the reduced density of states is Similarly, we can just plug in numbers here and get a value for this. The only difficulty left is this guy. So this, uh, what I've been calling the matrix element, uh, that we haven't really dealt with. We've just kind of left it there hanging around. And so dealing with this is going to be the subject of the next couple of videos. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, Feel free to post them down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.